Welcome everybody, thank you so much for joining us today. In this demo, I want to talk through the information model of the utility network and how it's like a little bit different from what you might be familiar with, like the geometric network or other networking model. And uh, like a quick, quick view of the information model showing you a utility network right here. You're familiar, this looks like a feature class. This is a geo database, right? And here's the thing, you might see that this is a very limited set of classes and we did this in purpose. We denormalized the model and kind of advised people to pour in their data into these fewer classes. And why did we do that? We did that for a very good reason. We noticed that when we open up the model for uh, the geometric network, people start adding more and more and more classes. And we noticed that we were hitting more and more tables. That means we're hitting more and more disk space, right? We're hitting different places in disk and that kind of slowed down our query because we'll have to do multiple queries, right? Just to fetch information. So we decided to denormalize the model and provide a set of classes. And these classes are assembly, device, junction, line, subnet line, and boundary. So you have a flavor of different classes here. You have a device that has its own semantic, uh, assembly, junction, line. And the moment we took that ability from you guys, we have to introduce something else to allow you to configure your own devices, right? Your own assets. How do you do that? That is the ability of the asset uh, discrimination, which we called the asset group and asset type. But before we jump into that, there we added a layer of logical network. We call it a domain network. And a domain network, think of it like your utility. And it could be a water network and a electric network, or it could be divided by the distribution. Like, hey, this is an electric distribution network, or uh, this is an electric transmission network, or water distribution, water transmission. And so you, you added, we added this layer of logical separation. And with each domain network, you get five classes, kind of four user classes, one managed class, the device, junction, and line, and assembly. Right? So with each domain network you can add, we get you get five classes and you can pour in your data there. All right. How do you pour in the data? That comes the second layer of abstraction, which is the asset group, which is nothing but something you all know, guys. It's called a subtype. The subtype, we just renamed it and called it the asset group. So now, yeah, I can put my arrestor as a device, I can put my capacitor as a device, I can put my circuit breaker as a device, my fuse as a device, my generation as a device, network protector, service point, and so on. But Hussein, that's not enough, right? I have a three-phase fuse, and I have a cabinet fuse, and I have, and I have all this kind of a sub-subtype, which used to be my subtype, in my geometric network. Where do I put these? Right? That's why we added another discriminator. We called it the asset type. And the asset type is just another field, but it's we have some semantic attached to it. And you can have a lot of cool stuff assigned to this level of uh, abstraction. So for example, if I go to if I go to let's talk, go to the assembly. And if I go to assembly, you can see that for example, the transformer bank is actually a container. That particular thing is a container. And if you go to another network, one that we add for free for you, it's called the structure network to support your structures. And you notice that we also have a structure assigned to, uh, to certain asset types, like uh, the pads, right? The pad is a structure, and this is a container. And these semantic are assigned at the asset type level. So you can see we beefed up the functionality at the subtype and the asset type level to do so much cool stuff. Mm -hmm.